So we're gonna get started in just a couple minutes. So you all should be muted right now um, and be able to see uh, some videos of our panelists and uh, some staff, but we'll get started at uh, one o'clock. If you have any questions, uh, if you use the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A section. If you can just type your, section, your uh, question in there, uh, we've got staff that'll be monitoring that. And when we get to the Q&A portion of the town hall, um, staff will be fielding those questions from there to our uh, panelists. I also have the chat feature on the far right side. If you have any other uh, comments or anything that you want to make, uh, staff will be monitoring that. But we ask that questions be done in the Q&A section, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're just about to get started here with this Teletown Hall. My name is Matt Lettler. I'm the advocacy manager at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we've got uh, two great panelists today with uh, President and CEO of the Chamber, Chris Steinacher, and our board chair, Ryan Griffin. Um, just a reminder that we are going to be using the question and answer function on the uh, Zoom. So if you scroll over under the bottom of your screen, you should see a pop-up that says Q&A. If you can put your questions into there, we've got staff that'll be monitoring those. And when we get to the Q&A section of our uh, um, town hall, we will be fielding those to our panelists. Um, also, the chat function is, uh, is available if you uh, have other comments you need to make or anything like that. But we do ask that the questions uh, go through the question and answer section. So we're just gonna wait a couple more minutes. I'll probably say the same message again and then we'll get started. We'll get started in just a second. All right, well, as I've said, my name is Matt Lettler. I'm the advocacy manager here at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're going to get started here in just a second with our great panel of our board chair, Ryan Griffin, and our president and CEO, Chris Steinacher. Um, just a reminder that we are going to be using the question and answer uh, uh, tool with the Zoom. It's at the bottom of your screen. If you just kind of scroll over, um, you'll be able to uh, ask any questions through there. Uh, staff will be fielding them to our uh, panelists. Uh, we also have the chat feature for you to talk amongst your, yourselves. But uh, We'll just go ahead and kick it off and um, we'll start with our uh, board chair, Ryan Griffin. Thank you, Matt. Can everyone hear me? I think oh, thumbs up. Good. Well, welcome. I am Ryan Griffin. I'm the chair of the St. Pete Chamber. Uh, first, my thoughts go out to everyone dealing with COVID-19, whether that be your health, your family's health, uh, economically, or just changes in your daily life. This is truly an unprecedented time for all of us, uh, but I am very excited about the future and how we've come together as a community. For a spot of levity, I will show you that I usually never wear a hat on this, but as many know, we have COVID hair going on, so uh, excuse the, excuse that, but my Tampa Bay Rays, as all of us, we're happy and hopeful that they can get back on the field and have a winning season, so uh, I'm excited. You have so many attendees today on. It looks like we have 120 plus attendees, and that is really a great sign to show how much uh, we have as a community coming together to have the concern about how to reopen and how to reopen the right way, the St. Pete way. 
uh, we are dealing with a lot right now. I know all of you are struggling and have had dealt with a lot of things. Uh, I am a restaurant owner, a small business owner, uh, a lawyer in my law firm, and I've been going through a lot of the stuff that you guys have presumably been going through too, whether it be how to keep your businesses afloat, uh, how to deal with employment issues, how to make sure that you're getting different fundings, how will you reopen, when will you reopen, and how to make sure that we do it right. That's why we're here today. Uh, we're here today to talk about what will it take to reopen and how we'll reopen. And I think it's important to understand why that is so um, critical for us to do it right. Because while we've had so much difficulty on our businesses and pressures and economic hardship, in the event that we did not, we do not get this right and cases spike, and ultimately that puts us in a situation where we have to go back to a stay at home that could even be more devastating economically to our businesses. Further, the governor has put an order in place that is alleviating some of the restrictions to allow certain businesses to come back. However, there are other businesses that have not gotten that ability to come back. And if we don't do this right for the businesses that are allowed to come back in a reduced capacity, that could have an effect on other businesses' ability to reopen. So a lot is at stake here stake with the health of our community, the economic health of our community, incomes, employment. So I just really think today is a really important time for us to get together and share information. As Matt mentioned, you have down on the bottom of your screen, the Q&A. Please take advantage of this. We're gonna be logging all the questions that you have and we will go through those after our presentation. We also have the chat function up, which I also see people are utilizing right now. So please uh, go ahead and use those. We'll try to get through everyone's questions. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn to Chris Steinacher, who's going to walk through a presentation that he has put together, the Chamber's put together, about the process of reopening. Chris, off to you. Thank you, Chairman Griffin. I appreciate uh, what you have, uh, how you set this up today. But let me personally say thank you for uh, what you're doing for our Chamber of Commerce and for all the businesses you're personally helping. I know uh, you've uh, you've done a lot for all the different restaurant and bar owners from what you've learned. Your law firm is helping us with our business navigation team, volunteering the hours to support. Um, you are indeed a good burger for us. I know it's been very hard on you personally, um, and you've had a recently you've had a new baby that you've not had a lot of time to spend with. So um, your commitment and leadership um, should be commended. Um, we're looking for good burgers all the time, and Ryan, and, and you certainly represent that to us. So uh, we don't mind the hat and the long hair today, as long as you uh, promise to clean that up by the time we see you in person. All right. I will. I will. <clears throat> all right. So uh, thank you, all members. Uh, I've got about 154 of you online right now. We're anticipating over a little 200 of you. So um, as we join, um, I am going to go through a, a uh, St. Pete Way story for you of how we are going to reopen the way we're going to do it, the culture in which we're going to do it. I'm going to show you a presentation that we performed at City Council yesterday. It has already been updated in the last 24 hours as we've gotten more and better news about how we're going to do this. So this reflects uh, the last five weeks of thinking and especially the last 12 hours of thinking. What we are calling this entire effort is the four R's of the St. Pete Way. We're going to relief reopen, recover, and reimagine the St. Pete way. Our chamber has been very uh, focused on this. We have absorbed a lot of this information from the Florida chamber, from the McKinsey group, from other state chambers, from other organizations across, and mostly from, your, from you as input of members. Our chamber staff, and I'm so proud of them, they're working so hard for so much less now, uh, but they have spoken to 91% of you all, um, the other 9% just won't jump on a call with me, but we have talked to over 1,200 businesses. Uh, we've reached out to even more than that now. I'm going to tell you that story, but this is what's informed of how we're going to open. So thank you for your input, and I'm looking forward to your questions after this. So please use the Q&A in the bottom uh, because we will address all those questions, and we will stay here till your questions get addressed, okay? Next slide, please. This is only gonna happen, guys. Only is gonna happen is if every one of you has the same mantra that I'm going to show you today. It's gotta be about safety first. The thing we need to do, we are, we are the poster children for those who are going early, going safely, and doing it well. The, the rest of the country, the rest of the world is watching us right now and how we perform ourselves. And if we do not do it well, we have a risk that is too great um, for all of us to uh, ever live through again. 
So what we're saying as a business community, as the mayor has said, as the county has said, and as the governor has said, uh, it's got to be smart. It's got to be in baby steps. And let's discuss that. Next slide. Why it is so important. Ryan mentioned this, um, and we've all expressed it. Um, we've had over a million people in our state uh, lose their jobs. And I use this slide. I could have used a lot of different slides about just the impact. But that is just a slide over the last uh, uh, 13, 13 years of our unemployment in March. And you can see that spike it has taken over these last three or four weeks. That's your employees, that's your neighbors, that's your family, that's probably you. Um, and so we understand that this is both human in a health crisis. Many of our, uh, even our employees and our businesses were affected. We lost people. We don't want to ever lose anyone again. And also we'd never want to lose another business again. So this is high stakes. We've got to get it right. Next slide. How we are creating a framework for this is through these four R's. In the screen, you see a couple things. I, I, you can see the four R's, the relief, reopen, recover, reimagine. On the left, you can see that we have to provide those services for everybody, for the individuals, you as a person, your employees, um, your grandmother in the retirement center. We have to do it for small and medium-sized businesses as well as large corporations. What we were able to do is come up with kind of a framework that allows us to create the strategic questions that the tactics that we're gonna talk about today come through. So you can see in the gray box, on the bottom of that gray box, what additional measures can we continue to do for relief? Many of you still have not received any relief funds. You've applied for every one of them and you're in a holding pattern. Some of you today opened up and found uh, a fighting chance check for $5,000. Some of you realize you're never gonna get one and some of you are waiting for unemployment that hasn't come through. We are not done with relief. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but we do wanna talk about reopen. So as we turn to this reopening, we know, and please understand, it is a small first critical step. It is not every industry that we think should be, uh, should be allowed to go. It's not every one of our businesses, and I'm so sad for that, but this is the first step to be able to do that. And that's why this critical first step is gonna be measured very carefully for us to get to the next one, which is recover. When we bring back the rest of our industries, when we start realizing maybe we should stimulate demand and maybe start marketing, and maybe we ask our visit St. Pete Clearwater and others to let people know that St. Pete is open again. Uh, but right now we're not ready for that yet. So that's not the recover. And then I cannot wait for the day when we all convene to talk about the lessons learned. I met with our uh, chair, co-chairs of our Sustainability Resiliency Committee this morning. If you want to join them, they're starting to think about that right now, is what lessons have we learned? How are we going to get through this to be more sustainable in the, in the future? And how are we going to make sure that any impacts that we have felt um, from a negative impact we, we solve and from a positive impact we continue? One of the positive impacts is I did an interview this morning down at the Don Cesar. It's beautiful. The water is crystal clear. That is a positive thing that's happened. I don't think there's many other things uh, um, that were positive, but that was a bright spot. So this is the framework we're gonna use and I wanna talk a little bit more about it. Next slide. Why? I pause here is because this is the most important slide if you understand why your behavior matters. And if you don't think your behavior matters, please pause on this slide. Every one of us is going to be judged by this. You and I learned uh, after the 2007 recession that went through 2010 about V and U-shaped recoveries. Um, you heard every economist talking about how we're looking for a V. Um, and uh, because a V is a quicker rebound, right? A U means that we have dragged to the bottom a long time and then we start coming back up. You and I want V recoveries. You see in front of you an optimistic scenario and a pessimistic scenario. This again was created by the Florida Chamber. They have a state economist. They're the only ones in the country that do so. He's working with a team of other economists to determine so far understanding the impacts, where are we? You can see in the optimistic scenario, if we do everything right, and that means you who opens May 4th, if you keep people six feet apart, if you keep your employees safe and you keep uh, safe hygiene and ensure that you understand how to operate correctly, we can see a rebound that brings us back at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. And I've only lost 2.3% of our GDP. If you and I mess around, we get big crowds, we pretend like we don't have to follow the rules and we start conducting bad behaviors, you see what can happen. It literally can be almost a 9% uh, 
a loss in our GDP, and more importantly, almost four years from now is when we could recover. I don't think our businesses, I don't think our families, I don't think our community can take that long. And I, so that's why it's important to us. Another just quick note on this before I leave this slide is those changes in GDP, 2.3 and 8.9. When we had the Great Depression um, in, uh, in, in 1929 um, and through 34, uh, we lost almost 35% of our GDP. So uh, while uh, 8.9 is not 35, it's uh, 2.3 is the number we're looking for. 2.3 was more what we experienced over that last recession. So this is why we, it's very important that your behavior, especially those who open May 4th, is going to determine how long, uh, how quickly we can get back to that St. Pete way. Next slide. One last thing I would like to uh, um, remind you about just why the behaviors matter. You know, uh, if you look at Florida as a state, it's the 17th largest economy in the world. So uh, there's, there's, it's only 16 other countries larger than our state. So we tend to look at it that way because we want to learn from all their other uh, efforts. Um, this slide helps us determine what Hong Kong and Singapore and South Korea have done. The top two slides show you what has happened when people rush back and don't have the proper procedures in place. Hong Kong began easing back in March. They were back at the end of March, bringing people back in. And by April 2nd, um, they were back sequestered with families only. So you can see that countries have gone, they've, they have not handled it well, and they found themselves back in isolation. That is that, is that U-shaped recovery. Singapore had that same situation where they thought they were done, and then they found themselves in that same situation, and they spiked back up. Where we're tracking is more in the South Korea model, at least that's what I would love us to see, where they understood they had a problem, they locked down, they did what we have done, which is we have put ourselves in, in out of harm's way, and now we have put, put ourselves in opportunity to handle the situation at hand. While we're not South Korea, and South Korea has done a lot more testing than we have, we're trying to demonstrate that the behaviors of, of our businesses affect the overall effects of how this um, pandemic is going to uh, uh, play out. So your behaviors sincerely matter. We're seeing it in other countries. Next slide. So let's get to this, because this is a very important slide for you as a business owner. You may not think it's your slide at all. I'm going to ask you to make it your slide going forward, because this is how we're going to determine if we're doing a good job. Because what I don't want to do is, uh, is get an order from the mayor or the governor to call you back and close you back down, and you're going to say, why? And they're going to say because of these numbers. So let's get to know the numbers. So what you see in front of you are six indicators that the country, the U.S., the White House has told us are the gates for states to go through. The governor has seen these gates and has proven through his press conference and the data he has that he feels like we are jumping through those at a good rate. The red arrows you see, the one for cases, the bottom one about downward trajectory of positive cases, and then the indicators on the hospitals being able to treat patients without crisis care and making sure that we have testing in place um, are, the, are the gates the mayor has asked us to review. And in fact, he's even got a number. So write this down, 6%. 6% of this downward trajectory of our positive tests as a percentage of total tests. That's what we're shooting for. It, and that's how we'll know if the first two weeks where we put people back on the streets, if we see a higher number than that, then we say we have another issue at hand and we're going to go slower. It doesn't mean we're going to stop, but it's going to be the way we're going to indicate how our progress, how are we doing. Additionally, I want to really re -encourage, encourage you, um, the hospital part is really important and the testing part is really important. You know, flattening of the curve was never meant to cure, uh, to, to, that the virus was going to go away. Flattening the curve was never going to say we're going to cure this virus. Flattening of the curve, the strategy of flattening of the curve was so that our health care providers and our hospitals can manage their care. What we were doing and why we had to shut down in the first place was we had too much stress on our hospitals. They were not prepared. They didn't have the testing of capabilities. They were not prepared with the ventilators. They, did, they just weren't ready. Let me give you a great example. When this started six, six weeks ago, um, at a local hospital, they would have to send out for that test. Any of our local hospitals sent out for the first test, and they got their results back in 14 days. That didn't help anything. It was, 
it doesn't, as you all know now about the incubation period, it didn't really assist. To fast forward over the last six weeks, now our hospitals have the ability for their patients to get results back in 45 minutes. What does that mean? It, does, it means that our hospitals right now have the ability to keep everybody safe because they know who is sick and who's not. The better part of that story is we wanna make sure they have enough critical beds and enough space for critical beds and enough talent and PPEs and technology for that. Our hospitals are outperforming their numbers on what they believe they need for a number of beds. So when you hear about why we're going out, we're going out because our healthcare professionals, those leaders who've been on the front lines from the very beginning have told us they are ready for uh, whatever comes to them, as long as we keep it within their ability to manage it, which is how many beds they have, how much activity can they handle, and how certain can they be. Um, every day we get smarter at this, just as your business has. I wanna reassure people, we've worked with our hospital administrators and the medical professionals on this decision. We understand what we're doing, but we're measuring every day, and you do too. Next slide. So our recommendations to the mayor and to the county and to the state have been these. Um, we are asking for everybody to get to know uh, that data. Number one is about just that criteria. I've seen a lot of good data. The Department of Health, as you all have seen, uh, issues a map of showing uh, the number of cases each, each day. Um, what we want is better information. I just talked about how many beds we need, how many ventilators, how many house testing going. I've asked for Pinellas County to provide a dashboard. If the business community is responsible for those results, we need to measure ourselves. And so we're gonna be asking and you're gonna be receiving data to help you understand if we're making the right decisions. The second thing and most important right now, let's pause on this about the PPE issue. We don't have a supply chain that is strong and healthy for you to jump into right now. Every one of you is probably on Google while you're listening to me, trying to figure out which kind of masks to get. Where do I get the Clorox bleach? How do I handle the gloves? You're doing that all on your own and that's unfortunate um, because that's gonna be uh, hard, it's gonna be expensive and you may not be successful. Uh, you may be striking out a lot of the places. What we're asking for is to make sure that Pinellas County has a communication system that you as a business know how to best source for what you're doing. And ideally, that's local sourcing. I know a lot of our distilleries and other folks and our, our tech companies and our 3D printers are part of that supply chain right now. I wanna formalize that. I wanna create jobs in our community, but also make assurance of that. Because here's the thing, in the governor's orders, please know this, many of our businesses are allowed to open up, but they can't take from the supply chain the, the, stock, the state stockpile um, of the PPEs, because you and I, God forbid, we would take away a PPE from the nurse who's gonna handle the COVID patient tonight. They, we don't wanna compete with that nurse, correct? So we wanna make sure their supply is always in place, and now we have to add to that supply for whatever you need to make your business well. So we've got to get better at our supply chain. We're asking our county to assist. If anyone can help me with this, this is part of what we really gotta get better at. And finally, the third part, as everybody has talked about, is testing and tracing. I mentioned to you, I believe our hospitals are ready. I don't believe um, our, you know, overall that the public knows how to access that uh, understanding, but I would always, always communicate, if you're not feeling well, get to one of our hospitals. Um, they, will, they will guide you through the process to understand if, uh, how and best you can handle yourself. It's got a lot better out there, and I want people to realize that hospitals have caught up with the demand that they've been asked to do. I do think there's one other opportunity for us in Pinellas County, as well as uh, just an opportunity for the tracing. Most of you have heard, they've got to create whatever tracing um, mechanisms are. So God forbid I would get COVID, and I met with you, and I was less than six feet away, and uh, now I have, someone has to contact you. How do you handle that? Uh, we're working with uh, some data analytics firms here in our community because Google and Apple are figuring that out and asking others to, to begin the, the app development where we're gonna try to develop an app for you all, for our community, where if, you're, if you have a phone, you turn on the app and you just leave it on and anytime someone gets within six feet of you, it will record that number. And then God forbid you have show up saying you have COVID, you, they upload your data to, that, to the Department of Health and every phone number within six, that was within six feet of you is recorded. And now they get an instant text re, re, saying, hey, you may have been contacted, please count the Department of Health. 
That's what the business community can do for us. That's what we're working on. That's what we need your help on. If that sounds interesting to you, help us source this so that we can support the, everybody's initiative to make sure we understand tracing. Next slide. All right, I'm still on the relief efforts. I haven't even gotten to reopen. I do wanna make sure that I spend one moment on relief as far as fighting chance funds are back in play. If you were denied, go back and see if uh, you can recover from that. Uh, the Pinellas Care starts Monday. Uh, you should be aware of that by now. Get your application in on Monday. We are not done with those and we're asking for assistance in continuing to support the Fighting Chance Funds. If you have resources, think about, or if you're doing fundraisers, thinking about putting it in there, that's helping businesses uh, every day. But we, you, know, you and I know we didn't touch every business. We didn't get them done. Uh, in fact, there's just almost no way to really support every business. Um, and that's the sad part that um, mo most of us have dealt with and the stories we've heard. So we gotta continue to support these efforts and advocate for these efforts. We have to ensure equity in our relief. Not every one of us has ever been impacted uh, by this in the same way, especially uh, South St. Pete, our minority community, the folks that traditionally policy has not supported them anyway. Well, this policy is gonna support them. We've learned, we've had the courageous conversations. Our policies must reflect what we've learned and what kind of community we are. We're gonna ensure equity in our relief. And finally, the last part, if you're listening and you're a home-based business, imagine all those wonderful vendors at the St. Pete market. And we're walking through, all those vendors are sitting at home. They received very little or zero support because of they just fell through the cracks. They didn't have a brick and mortar building. Um, they were not supported. They are losing resources. They don't have resources. There are so many businesses like that that we missed. We're going to figure out how to get back and get them some resources. Next slide. Now, finally, we get to reopen. So important, and I was so excited yesterday, and I'm so excited today about this opportunity, about aligning all the government agencies' requirements. I don't want you to go, should I do that because the state's doing it and the county and city, we've got to make sure our elected officials give us one clear path to get out the door, right? And so that's what we spent yesterday on with the city. And the, what, we, uh, what we heard from the city, the city council and the, and the mayor is that he um, is following the governor's orders. He's watching them very closely. He's digging into them even as we speak because they're very complicated. He's going to provide us any other inputs, recommendations, from that that he believes we should be aware of that concerns him, but he's asking you guys to get prepared to do this the St. Pete way, the safe, smart way for our community. So that's where we come in. And the, the second bullet on this about policy versus guidelines, where you really want this to occur is, you do want government to set the public spaces, events, safety issues. You want them to set those policies. They do that every day anyway, and they've done that for you. And you and I have followed those rules. What we're gonna to try to do is create those guidelines. You want the business community in charge of the guidelines as like they always have, which is how are we gonna do customer client interactions? How are we gonna configure our restaurants and, and retail? And what kind of decisions are we gonna make about our customer interactions? That's what we're being asked to do today. Next slide. I wanna go through this one more time because I know that there's a lot of people on the call, almost 200 now. Um, we uh, want to make sure that everyone understands what phase one means for everybody. What phase one means for in individuals is you must still continue to do what you've been doing. What we're asking is continue to shelter in, in place if you, if, you have, if you can. We don't want a mass run on everything. That this is, the virus is not dead, guys. We have to just be careful how we transmit it with each other. What we want to do is say when you're in public again, no social settings of more than 10 people. This is what the state has said, this is what the feds have said, and this is what our city has said. So they are gonna be looking for bad actors. Go ahead and put 12 people in front of your restaurant in one group, and you're gonna be the first poster child for what's bad behavior, and you may shut us all down. And you know what, we'll know who you are. And I'm saying that somewhat jokingly, but don't be the person who breaks this for us. So you're gonna to have to monitor individuals and you're gonna to have to lead the individuals. So you're not going to, we're, not going to, we're not going to group the way we used to group. Next slide. 
for you as employers, this is what the, state, the federal government has told us. We know this now of who's going to be open. We know that elective surgeries, uh, we know schools. Um, this is um, too broad for us right now because now we've got even better rules. So I'm going to go to the next slide that uh, that will start diving into who we need to bring in to work. Um, what I want to make sure that this is important for all businesses, a chamber of commerce or anybody else, is what we're asking you to do is instill encourage teleworking. Because it, it, remember what I said about the PPEs um, is one of the reasons why for that is we do not want you to get into the stream uh, and, and take away from that nurse who's taking care of that patient at midnight on that floor. Um, so we want to make sure that the, the supply of those kind of issues start to catch up. So if you can encourage teleworking and you don't necessarily need to be in your office today um, or on May 4th, I would say please continue to do that. Encourage your employees to do that or work in shifts or phases. You're going to have to learn a lot more about the common areas of every place you do. We're going to talk about that. And again, non-essential travel is still not open for everybody. So I think everybody's going to remain in the Tampa Bay area going forward. Finally, the piece about vulnerable population, you're going to see this a couple times. Please protect the vulnerable population. That's the elderly or people with immune conditions. We know those are the ones that this is affected the most. If you are in my voice range and you are part of that, your responsibility is to hunker down, hang tight, uh, health is on, help is on its way, but the best thing for you is to stay uh, yeah, sequestered at this moment. Next slide. All right, so now we get into what Florida has told us. Next slide. Here's what we're going to do. So um, unfortunately, and this is going to be an issue for you as an employer, for your employees. Remember how your employees used to come to work and maybe had to leave at three or four or five to get your kids out of daycare? That daycare is not open right now. So many of your employees are still suffering for going, hey, I, I'm no school teacher, but I got to do this. How do I do my work? So please uh, put in your policy manuals how you're going to handle employees that have children at home and what kind of uh, provisions can you provide them. Unfortunately, we aren't going to uh, be visiting anyone in a senior facility uh, soon, as we talked about the vulnerable population. The third bullet is very important for me to just pause on because I think it gets lost in some of this. It says elective surgeries. When you read the governor's orders, it's a little bit more than that. And when you ask the governor's orders uh, to dive in deeper, it's actually a lot more than that. There's been a little bit of the debate on this at the county, but elective surgeries is everything from orthodontists, dentists, uh, endo endodontics, um, um, mental health counselors, uh, the, the whole world of doctor's offices of other kinds of healthcare professionals. That's what that requires. That uh, starts May 4th as well. But you've got to read the governor's orders about what those requirements are, because part of that is if you're already um, open and you may be in the PPE uh, stockpile stream, so maybe the state has sent you some of those PPEs, you can't open up or you can't use them for that, because again, that, that competes. So you have to, um, if you have your own PPEs and you can prove that you can keep the six feet distances, uh, if you're face to face wearing masks and, uh, and the other requirements, um, I encourage you to get going on that. The one we've had the concern about is a massage therapy. There is a little confusion here. So if you're a massage therapist, as my wife is, we're confused right now. The governor allowed us to get open. We got con confirmation of that yesterday, last night from the Department of Health under those rules. Um, the county um, sees that a little different. Uh, they're issuing today saying only massage with uh, prescriptions. Um, we are still trying to understand that um, better. Um, we don't understand why they would put that restriction on that. Uh, we understand that there is close proximity, uh, but just as all those other healthcare practitioners, they're proving they understand that. So if you're a massage therapist, I would say get prepared, uh, be ready. Um, and if you want to talk to Matt, who's on the call, and he'll talk to you later about how to handle that, I would say uh, uh, with extreme caution. We've talked about restaurants as the fourth bullet. We're going to spend a little bit more time on that. But this, again, is one of those where uh, what we heard um, in the last 24 hours is, yes, you can open 25% uh, capacity in your uh, inside location. The 25% capacity does include all staff. I'm not sure how you calculate 25%. Um, and there's some really good examples. Other people have proven to me that it's harder for some. Um, my advice to you is, again, keep everything spaced out six feet, no matter what, right? Because that's one of the requirements. And if it looks too crowded, it is too crowded. But do your best to do 25% of what you feel like your calculation is. 
as long as, again, you're not having groups of 10 or more seated, you're not sitting tables of, at that less than six feet apart, and you're doing the other things we're gonna talk about, including contact-free payment, uh, wipe through uh, menus or disposable menus, um, all the other safety conditions you guys are putting in place. Our retailers, the, the next bullet um, can begin to open and that inquire, that require, that's a lot of different uh, establishments. Um, if you sell things, you can open up again at 25% indoor capacity. I encourage you to do all the, uh, uh, as well, we're gonna talk about OSHA's requirements for you um, and the markers you need and the policies you're gonna need to talk about. And, and unfortunately uh, for bars, and that includes our uh, breweries and distilleries, our gyms, and, and most importantly, our personal services, um, such as hairdressers and nail salons, we have uh, not been able to get you open yet. Uh, they believe there's too much risk still with a face-to-face uh, -face contact, um, and they don't believe there's enough uh, uh, volume in the system, uh, enough capacity in the system to handle the volume that might be caused by it. My advice and my suggestion is, listen to the rest of this because we're gonna talk about how to get your policies in place, so we can prove to the government and others that you're ready and then be prepared for that. But please, you know, the only way I'm gonna to get, to, to get you open quicker is that everybody behaves appropriately for this first step. If we see bad actors, I will never be able to get you guys open in time. So help support the St. Pete Y by encouraging the good behaviors. Next slide. We've talked about these others. So this is about the vulnerable individuals. Um, and again, making sure that everybody understands you can still cannot have large groups. So that uh, kegger party you're gonna put in your backyard on Monday night or Tuesday for Cinco de Mayo, don't do it. It's crazy. You shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff right now. It's not healthy to do that. And here's the one that is probably one that provides, I think the best guidance to you um, about face masks because that's the number one question we've been getting. Um, the governor has done a great job. And now, like we said, the mayor has endorsed this as well. Face masks are recommended for those in face-to-face -face interactions and where you can't really social distance. So if you're hunkered down in an office and there's some three other people and they have their own offices and you guys stay six feet away naturally anyway, yeah, no, you don't need to wear a mask if you don't feel like you need to. Um, but we are encouraging you to think about what we're dealing with. You don't know if you have a virus and you don't know if the person next to you has the virus. We're trying to stop the spread of virus. This is an easy way. So I'm not trying to make a political statement about what your choice is gonna be, but we're recommending that if you have those face-to-face -to -face interactions, you're gonna build more confidence and trust with your consumers and with your market if you're wearing those, and it certainly would help us go a long way. Next slide. So here's how we start this process. Um, all, so you see this chart, this was done by the CDC. So the rest of this information, a lot of this information is gonna come from the CDC and OSHA now, because what we want to make sure is that, um, like we said, is uh, we want you guys to understand the rules and create your procedures. And I, I mentioned like the restaurant tours. Restaurants are one of the safest places around. And you guys make your living off of making sure I don't get sick when I eat your burger, right? And you get sued and, and closed down if you do. And Dirty Dining comes and does a, as a TV show on you. So you guys are smart about this. And I think we need to tell the consumer that that you guys live in this life and now you're even doing more. But what you see on the slide is uh, under the picture of the people talking are all the things I've talked about, all the gates that you and I have to understand of why we're opening and how we're opening. And, if we, and now we've said we can pass all those. So now this is where your work comes in. And I know so many of you have done some great work because I've seen a lot of it. Um, you sent me that information, but now's your chance to prove to um, St. Pete that you understand this by putting together these practices. What are your healthy hygiene practices? How are you promoting them? How are you communicating them? Have you disinfected? And have you really understand what disinfecting is? We did a, a webcast on Catalyst uh, where we talked uh, from JPSID, Dontrell Lawson helped us understand disinfecting isn't always the same. So please understand that, learn about it, contact Dontrell if you need to, or somebody like that, uh, Chris Burke, uh, from uh, Guardian Restorations also helping. There are people that can assist you with uh, disinfecting. They're not all created equal. And please understand that. And I know you do. Uh, we are, you know, so you see these other ones that we've talked about. You're going to have to come up with those and then you're going to have to monitor those things. So you have to create a new policy page in your policy manual that you have to meet with every employee to discuss. This is for your own liability help as well. You have got to show 
the public your and your employees and yourself that you understand what is at what is at stake and what are your procedures so you've got to write them down you've got to communicate them and you've got to be sure that they cover everything that you need to think about to ensure that your liability is not at risk we're asking our senator brandis to help us with frivolous li liability lawsuits but we can't help with you if you don't have the policies in place and the procedures in place that communicate of how and what you've done to prevent these kind of things. So please put some time into your risk analysis and to your policy manuals, and we'd like to help. Next slide. There's help out on the streets right now. In front of you is an OSHA guide. Uh, many of you have probably already downloaded it. I believe we've uh, put that a link into our, ch into our chat feature here. So um, I would ask you to download that if you, if it's a great place to start. I know many of you are part of associations and other efforts that are putting your guidelines together. Cre start with that in the first place and now begin to build your guidelines on, on what that looks like. So that includes everything from, um, as we talked, um, we um, did an interview this morning with the Don Cesar. They're opening back up. They actually stayed open. Um, they went from 400 employees to 15 but they stayed open the whole time. And now they're starting to get booking people back in. He went through how amazingly they deconstructed that whole experience from the time you pull into the parking lot and pull up next to another car. Um, how can we keep people safe? So you may even have to think about your parking lot. Are you spacing cars six feet apart? Are you closing parking lot? Just so people that when they get out of their, that they get out of their cars, they don't uh, interfere with that already. So you've got to make sure that every piece of it, so deconstruct the experience a customer has from the time they get into your parking lot to the time you give them the receipt and walk them out the door. What has been touched? Who have they seen? How close have they been? What have you done? So those single use items, unfortunately we got rid of plastic straws, but I think plastic utensils are going to be the name of the game. I think plastic um, uh, uh, disposable ketchup and salt and all those things should be the name of the game. If you're in an office setting, you might have to buy an extra stapler because you don't want to share staplers. There's no way you're going to keep that clean enough throughout the process. So you've got a lot of things to think about and, and we're going to help as well as there's a, the CDC and OSHA is going to help. Next slide. What we anticipate, and this is what we'd love to do for you, what we're asking is if you've already got your policies, and it could be just a page, it could be an idea, but it, 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 or it could be a, a document that's 20 pages long. I ask you to send it to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, when you send it to us, we're going to look through that. And if it goes through those same OSHA guidelines, what we'd love to do is put one of these on your building as well, a poster, something like this. This is not the final. Uh, this was done by Clear PH, but we're, we're working to, to get this on. This is what other communities are doing. This, what, what we're trying to build is kind of that good housekeeping seal so that the consumer, if they see a bright poster in the window, they know, and we're gonna promote this, that your business has policies and procedures to keep them safe. And imagine seeing all of our streets lined with just this colorful poster of people that care. Um, this is gonna be kind of what we promote as, we know these businesses are safe for your business, Please do that. So all we're asking is to either join us in creating policies or send us your policies. Um, we're not gonna be the cop for you because the cop, cops are gonna be watching that too. We're just gonna be the guidance and support and help necessary for you. Next slide. So how do I do that? How do I do that? I, I, I need help doing that, right? So this is a great thing. Um, you can see the chamber is consisting of more than one logo on the bottom of this flyer here. Um, you, because of your investment in our community and your investment in the Chamber of Commerce, um, you've allowed us to build an ecosystem for economic development. If you've ever wondered why St. Pete is so wonderful, a lot of it is with all the organizations in the community and these four below. I mean, these are, these, we're a team. All of us work together that you see behind here. So the EDC, the Greenhouse, the Grow Smarter, and St. Pete Chamber have all come together to make sure there are people to help you with that relief effort and help you with this restart effort as far as working up any policies and procedures. It's called our Business Resiliency Team. I'd love to ask um, Kim Vogel to join me and Jocelyn Howard to help us um, just understand what the Business Resiliency Team can do for you because they're gonna help you today. Kim, are you online? I am. Take it away. 
Hi, thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we made a decision that it was really important for us to put this business resiliency team together for you um, as our small business owners. Uh, the business resiliency team is made up of a group of navigators who are, are taking the journey with you right? Just taking this journey with you and trying to be a resource, trying to provide resource, trying to um, share as much information as possible as we get it. All of this information continues to just kind of keep coming and it comes pretty quickly. Um, so we, we do ask for your patience with us as well, but please know we do have this team of navigators. If you are a business owner and you would like to have a navigator, we do, we will share our website with you in the chat. It is the grow smarter, uh, stpete.com uh, slash BRT. I hope I have that right. Um, and you can, you can uh, share your information with us about your business and we will make sure that a navigator gets with you. But again, th this is, this is our way of saying we are taking this journey with you. We have your back. We are, are hoping to, as we continue to learn all about the continued relief funding, but also about all of these different things about reopening. We're doing our very best to educate ourselves and to also help you continue to, to do best business practice so that you can, you can be as successful as possible. We believe in you. We know we can all come back and our goal is to, to bring St. Pete back to exactly all of the pieces that we know and love. Um, we, have ha we have heard some success stories already. Um, we are so appreciative of the businesses that we have talked to already. And uh, those business owners are actually already making referrals to our business resiliency team of other business owners that they, that they know. So please know we are here. We are focused on, on business owners, uh, especially our small business owners, um, minority owned business owners, women owned business owners, sole proprietors, those home-based businesses. We know that there's not a lot of support out there. We're all trying to navigate um, all of these different funding sources and we promise we will do that with you. We're also here to be of support to our nonprofits as much as we possibly can. So again, please, please, please know that we are here. Um, again, um, uh, growsmarterstpete.com uh, slash BRT, and that's where there's information. And also follow all of our different social channels and you'll be able to see that. I'm gonna turn it over to my uh, friend and colleague, uh, Jocelyn Howard, who's gonna share some more information about Grow Smarter initiatives for continued economic development. Thank you, Kim. So this is one of kind of a comprehensive set of response efforts that Grow Smarter has put together. And what we really ask from you, as Chris mentioned before, we want equity to be a big focus of our response. So we really need your help for getting the word out about this business resiliency team. Uh, we would also like you or someone in your network who you know might be able to, to give us five. So we're actively looking for professionals across the board from marketing to business consultants to attorneys and accountants, um, probably even copywriters, anyone who wants to donate some hours to help businesses who we're in touch with through this team, we are looking for you. You can email Kim. You can also learn more about the team and get in touch directly, again, at that URL below. But we're really looking to our community to help us spread the word. We want this to be a service for every business in St. Pete. We want to spread prosperity and resilience to everyone here. So um, please, again, spread the word about these efforts, whether you're a business or a nonprofit who would like some support, or you have some hours to give back to the community and to support other businesses here in St. Pete. All right, Jocelyn, thank you, Kim, thank you. Um, so please guys, uh, now you know, uh, when I say we can help you, we've got professionals helping you and you can help us help those. So um, this is the St. Pete way in a nutshell. You know, I've always said St. Pete is a hug, not a handshake. St. Pete is a neighborhood, not a subdivision. Let's behave that way. We're gonna, be, we're gonna be safe and sound and people still need that help. So I'm so proud of our Greenhouse and Grow Smarter teams to put this together and the EDC who is assisting with us on this as well as our chamber. So well done, next slide. Oop, that's not a slide, that's me. 
All right, so um, the final slide is just um, how we're gonna how we're gonna have the conversation. So what I really you know wh why I put this slide up is we've only talked about relief and reopen. You saw my one of my first slides about this whole recovery and reimagine. We have still got so much more information, knowledge, questions that are going on uh, to get to recover. But I really believe we're getting so close, guys. If we can spend the next two weeks smart, safe, and sane, we can get to this next step and we need your help to do so. So now what I'd love to do is turn it to Matt. He's got your questions. I'm gonna do the best and Ryan um, is gonna do the best to point you in the right direction, but I'm also gonna ask our business navigation team and others to chime in if we have one that I can't answer. So please let's get started so that we can get as many questions answered as possible. All right, thanks, Chris. Um, the first question, uh, the year-long rebound operating at 25% capacity, a lot of our small business community might not make it to Q3. What are the plans for the economic fallout? And then gov uh, the, the same question, government overreach has crippled a sm the small business community throughout the nation. We're trading our liberties for our security. How do we find a balance between maintaining our rights and liberties and keeping quote unquote safe? Well, let's start with an easy question then, Matt. I'm not kidding. That, um, that seems like a, a loaded one there, but here's how I would answer that. First is, oh, we're not going to stay at 25% for three quarters or for a long period of time. How we're going to get out of 25% is these next two weeks, and I mean that so dramatically. We were negotiating to get you guys to 50%, all right, but what we need to show is that data. We'll get to 50% real soon if you guys behave and that we keep people separated. We'll get to 100% even sooner if we do the same. So I don't see the government trying to say, this is all you can do. They're trying to bring us back safely. And I appreciate that because we were hurting. We did not have enough capacity to take care of people. What I've told you now is the good news is the capacity has changed and the government understands that we've caught up to this. The virus will still be here. People in St. Pete will still die from that. And that's the tragedy. And that's why we're trying to be very careful with it. But what we as a Chamber of Commerce are saying is, we're ready to reopen, but we're going to do that safely. We are not, you know, Matt, you've always, you've helped me kind of articulate that we're the purple Pelicans. We're not red team, we're not blue team. I'm, you know, really for you guys, I wanted to be the green Pelican just because that's what we're about is the money, but we're more than money. We're about these people. Um, and so it's not politics, it's about safety right now. Um, and the best thing we can do is handle the next two weeks, and then we can all start to see the recovery coming. So that's how I would answer that one. Ryan, do you have any other part of that? Yeah, just I think echoing on that a couple other things. Number one is uh, the city of St. Pete, as you've seen on the Fighting Chance, uh, they are they have changed the rules the next week to open that up. They have a lot more of their funding that they're trying to get out. So I think that if this was to continue to go on, you'll see some efforts on the city level. Also, the private uh, groups are getting together to support Fighting Chance to put more funds in to help more businesses if this was to continue forward as the question raised of a 25% uh, level. Also, the, the Pinellas Cares, there's no rush on that. There's enough money to fund all, all businesses that qualify, but I think there'll be additional relief and support coming if we ultimately got to a point where we had to continue to stay at a 25% level. However, I do think Chris is right that the objective here is in the very near future is to then ramp up Right, and so I think you'll be seeing that. I also think there's a, as you saw in the PPP, uh, they have the different tranches and now are looking at different organizations, right? At first it looked at certain businesses, now looking at, well, is it gonna be nonprofits, others? So I think that that will be continued as CARES Acts can be extended. So something to, to look for as we go forward. Great, thank you, Ryan. Uh, Matt, next question, please. Uh, yes. How was the six percent determined? And this is in regards to the um, the mayor wanting that six, not going six percent more of uh, positive tests in, of overall tests. Um, I, he was consulting with uh, the medical professionals at the Department of Health, the, uh, the hospital system in Pinellas County, and his medical uh, professionals. Um, I think he was. Um, doing what we asked, which is just set a goal. Because if someone said, well, we're gonna pick you back into, we're gonna take you back out of, off the streets if the numbers go up, I would say, well, how high does the number go up? So we just needed some kind of uh, number. And so I think what he did was look, you know, use 
the medical professionals to understand what a, a, a good rate would be that we can absorb in our, in our current hospital system for St. Pete. And that's where I think he landed at that number. It could be a debatable number. All I know it's a number that I'm gonna stay underneath so that I can keep every business open. Next question, please. Gotcha. Um, yes, uh, let's see. How will Pinellas handle the food supply shortages for our restaurant business community? What about farms and farmers markets? Hey, Brian, you're a restaurateur. Yeah, I, I, in terms of Pinellas, I'm not sure, Chris, if you heard uh, Mike or anyone talk Pinellas County on what they're going to do on the food shortages. Um, I, I think one of the things is going to be essentially how this rollout is planned. Obviously, this is, came out yesterday and to see what the demand would be. Obviously, reduced capacity levels will, will affect the, the food supply uh, demand. Um, so I, I don't have information as to what that shortage would be or, or as relates to restaurants. I think that's something that we can follow back up with Pinellas County to see if they have anything planned and we can post it um, on our site. Um, and yeah, so I, I wrote it down too. That's a great question. I, I want to get back to whoever asked that because I got to I got to learn more about it. But here's what I believe about um, where we're at for all, anything you guys need to operate, whether it's your PPEs or your supplies. Um, we're on our own. That's why that source Pinellas to me is really important because uh, the federal government and state government have basically told us you can do it, but you need to have yourself self-sufficient. So that's why I really want to try to get our medical device professionals. And now the question was talking about our farmers, our, you know, our neighborhood farms and others, and those farms in the Florida area that can assist. Yeah, I, I think those are great questions. Obviously, I don't know how long it takes to grow the things we're going to need, but uh, tapping our local sourcing efforts is a way not only to stimulate the economy by making sure we're keeping our money here in St. Pete, but also making sure we're taking care of the things we need to, to have. Next question, Matt. Apologize. So if you've applied for PPP and emergency disaster funding, but have been told that banks are not taking on new loans and the SBA is currently taking more than 60 to 90 days, get any kind of approval or denial, what can a business do to access funding? And if there's no funding available and the lease needs to be broken in order to keep the business going, is there any place we can turn to for help? Great, that's a Ryan Griffin question. Yeah, so a couple questions in there, right? Um, first, for the first part of that question regarding banks, I'm constantly going back to our local banks and community banks, which seem to be uh, have a faster turnaround time. And as the additional PPP monies got funded through the government, uh, last week, I believe maybe this time flies, um, uh, they are continuing to update me on who's uh, taking new applications. So I think that's something that we just got to continue to stay up on and I'm getting notices and we can post those and I have to ask those banks to let us know, hey, if you're taking on additional new PPP loans, will you let us know and that we could post that on the chamber. So I think that was the first part of the question. I just had the question kind of moved on me. So I, I'm trying to remember the second part of that question I think was, um, can you recite that, Matt, the last part of that question? I think I lost it, but I think the question was least related to what? The lease? Yeah, if, if you had to, if you had to uh, break the lease, what, uh, what, what uh, relief is there available? Okay, so that goes uh, a couple different things on that. At, uh, beyond just you know what relief is available, you had to break the lease. Um, first, you've seen a lot of different counties and states issuing the no eviction status, especially on residential. I think you might ultimately see that in some counties and maybe our county on the commercial side of things. Uh, obviously, I, th I think our community and our landlords have been very uh, giving in most circumstances of giving grace periods and prolonging the lease <laughs> maybe to the back of the lease period in order to provide that relief. So first, I would try to I would try to exhaust those available remedies and work with your landlord uh, to see if there's something you can do because at the same point in time, uh, landlords understand if, if yes, they have bills to pay, but if ultimately they have to remove you from the premises, they're gonna be in a bad situation financially too. So I think there's some things there in terms of, uh, you know, if that has to happen, what, what, what is out there for you? I think that's when you turn to the give us five right? That give us five that we just talked about on the Grow Smarter. Uh, definitely reach out to us on there. I think we can go more in depth with CPAs and lawyers that can talk about your individual situation. Those could be contractual issues. There could be a lot of things that there could be some opportunities for you. So I would just suggest that person reach out to us on, on give us five. My lawyers and my office are volunteering their time and it would probably be something we can look at. Awesome. 
Uh, the next question, uh, I believe I know the answer is, but can we get a copy of uh, these slides and post them up somewhere after this, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. What I'll ask our team is make sure that um, we post it, we send it out, um, we put it on Facebook, we put it everywhere we can. We're sharing this and we ask you share it with anybody um, that you can, um, That because this is about building culture of our community as much as it is um, the actual rule. So part of this is the most important part about what is the St. Pete way anyway? It's just culture. It's how we're gonna behave to ensure that you and I can both be successful. I'm gonna share it with everybody. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be adding to it because every day we get new rules and information. So um, how about if I try to keep it evergreen and we'll keep sending it out or posting it saying, here, there's been up some, some updates. So here's the latest because like I said, we get new information every day. Perfect. And where do people send the information regarding, regarding the sanitizing protocols so they can get a poster when they're available? Yep. So we're going to send that to the St. Pete Chamber of Commerce. Um, that's a great question. How about if we send it right to CEO at stpete.com? CEO at stpete.com. If you send those to me, um, and we review and it, it looks like it's got everything OSHA and CDC said were those pieces. I'd, I'll go put those on. Uh, I'd love to put the first ones on myself um, and celebrate on Monday. Um, so please, uh, we'll get them going and uh, you start sending them that way. What we'd love to talk about, and if you're in retail um, and, and you want to join us in a few minutes for the next call, we're going to work with our retailers on just understanding how best can we create a um, simple, simple guide of rules or guidelines. Uh, we are sharing information. So if you're kind of confused what you would do, get back on the call at two o'clock. Um, we're going to work with those affinity groups in retail. Uh, Ryan's going to be on a call at three o'clock with the restaurant tours. Um, so we're working with those as well. Um, and we're going to try to get with every affinity group. We're going to get with personal services next week. Um, uh, and the only reason we delayed not doing it today is because they're not able to open. Um, so we're trying to get anybody who can that wants to be part of an affinity group that you can um, cut, paste, and steal all the information so you can get jump started. You can learn and listen from others because it'll be more of a Zoom session where everybody will be chatting. Um, and, then, uh, um, and then ideally from that, we will send that information to the city as well. So the city, we can say, here's what our retailers have said were good policies. And so they have an understanding of that as well. Because part of this is how we're communicating that we're not just a bunch of cowboys running around the street shooting up the place, that we're actually uh, caretakers of this community. Chris, uh, two last questions. Um, what about the Fighting Chance Fund? Uh, are those just restrictions because they aren't going to be, aren't, don't live in St. Pete or aren't brick and mortar? What are the word, what's the word on those getting changed? Yeah, that is so exciting. And um, there, if you were denied because you have a business in St. Pete, you live in Clearwater, uh, you better get back online today and resubmit. Um, please resubmit. Um, and please make Kim or just uh, Kim on our team uh, uh, aware of your situation. Um, because she can help shepherd that as well. Um, there have been a lot of folks who lived outside the boundaries and unfortunately them, their business and their employees were not able to get in a fighting chance. Now that's back up and available. We got a great presentation from the city about more money being put into it. So between uh, uh, reapplying for fighting chance and the opportunity, and I'm sincere about Pinellas Cares is a, if you should, everybody should make sure they uh, apply for that if they qualify because that is one of the simplest, quickest ways to get you some resources to help with those expenses we've talked about. Chris, can I, can I just add that it's because we heard from so many of you, because we heard your voices, that that piece of Fighting Chance was changed. So that it included people who had their businesses in St. Pete, um, but lived maybe outside of the city. <laughs> Thank you, your voices were heard. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so uh, next question, Matt, let's finish this up because I, I realize it's two o'clock already. Right? Yeah, time flies when you have a good time. What, uh, getting venues open back up, when, when will they be open and also uh, personal service, barbershops, things like that? Okay, yeah. And so uh, uh, let me just wrap up on the fighting chance. The other uh, difference uh, for those who might have been denied, it's a smaller difference, but if you're a travel agency or a travel planner um, and you were denied, you have the ability to get in too. Uh, the other thing before I answer that question, the, the great news as well, and we've heard this, if you're a, if you're a do dog groomer or a mobile dog groomer, uh, you can open up on the fourth as well. We've had, you know, we care a lot about our four-legged four furry friends 
Um, and um, we've gotten word that that is uh, available too. Now, again, you have to follow all the same guidelines, about 25, 25% because you're, you're being seen as a retail, 25% um, and all those other social distancing. So if, if you don't know if you're open or not, please contact us as well. We'd love to make sure that you are if, if, you, if you can be. Um, what was the question though, Matt? What did you ask me? Uh, it was about venues and then also personal services, barbershop, things like that. Yeah. Um, boy, you know, I think, I think um, the governor showed uh, some real, um, you know, struggles with how best to get you guys back to work. He really wanted to, uh, he just really felt the face-to-face -face, uh, capacity issues were going to be an, uh, a problem. My understanding is if he sees what we're hoping for, which is that number staying low of a percent a positive and that we've conducted ourselves well these first two weeks, uh, we'll start seeing changes every two weeks and then quicker after that. So I can't tell personal services in, in two weeks, but it, it, you should be prepared. So, I mean, all these things about trying to get Clorox bleach right now just to clean your place, you should be spending time on all those issues uh, in preparation. I unfortunately believe it's going to be a little longer. And for venues, um, some venues are going to be able to space and do tw uh, 10 people. It's not going to go up from that very quickly. Uh, venues are going to be one of our lar longer uh, term efforts. But I, I, if you watch the governor talk, and I, I think he really meant it, um, he, he was optimistic that even Major League Baseball uh, will be operating again in Florida before the end of this year. So um, I know that's not May 4th, but uh, I know that it's coming and it, it's all based on what happens next week with us. I think that's it, Chris. All right. Matt, I just well, I did see one question on there. It was talking about uh, incorporating reimagine the relief stage. I just want to point out to the businesses that are on this uh, uh, this webinar. Uh, I think that is really critical, right? Because especially if you get PPP funds and, and things like that, make sure that you're putting your funds. I've been on a lot of different Zoom meetings about this. Make sure you're putting their funds not to maybe what, what your previous product was, right? Put your efforts towards what your new product is, right? And that might be how you deliver the product to your customers, how you deliver it to your guests, how do you engage with your guests? There's a lot of creative things you see out there, but I really think you should put the time into really looking at that because I, I believe that there could be the, this world we're living in, in terms of social distancing and different restrictions and the consumer confidence will continue on for a longer period of time, regardless of the governor's orders, Right. So I just want you guys to be looking at that and try to challenge yourself to remodify your product and how you how you sell it. Great. Well, Ryan, thank you for uh, your leadership. I am curious of what that big gold rat is above you. Maybe someday you can share with all of us what the heck that thing is. And that's a that's a piggy bank, Chris. It's a piggy bank. There's not much money in it, but uh, it's a piggy bank. Oh my God! If you know we're, we're, where we're at, if Ryan Griffin has his piggy bank out and it's empty, so. Um, but thank you, Ryan, for your leadership and, and your partnership with our staff. Uh, Kim and Jocelyn, thank you for uh, leading the charge on how we're going to get our teams back on the streets. Candace, thank you for uh, helping us navigate. Matt, well done on uh, making sure that uh, our voice is heard in, in uh, Tallahassee and D.C. You're doing a great job. And to all of our members who I didn't answer your question, you know how to get a hold of me, um, CEO at stpete.com um, and Kim Vogel um, at the Greenhouse. Um, we're not done yet. We know we got more questions. We've created as many questions as we answered today, but that's why we're working around the clock to help you guys and the chamber is here. Uh, the greenhouse is here, Grow Smarter is here, the EDC is here working for you guys. Take us up on it. We look forward to seeing you and let's be safe on May 4th and let's do this right. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.